since his announcement ahead of Independence Day that he intends to pursue a new basic law regarding the country's Jewishness, the Israeli Prime Minister stirred a debate regarding what such a law would mean. All month, the press in Israel debated the nature of Zionism and what enshrining the Jewishness of the state into its constitution-like laws would mean for a nation already struggling to preserve an image of democracy. Uda Bisharet writes in Haaretz, to hear Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu speak of Judea and Samaria, the places where Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, David and Solomon, Isaiah and Jeremiah lived, you'd think he'd just taken leave of these honored figures after finishing up a sheep herding shift near a cave in the Judean hills. In Israel Ayom, Dror Eidar responds, the purpose of a national home is to provide a legitimate space for the blossoming of a specific, distinct culture, particularly when the culture differs from that of the nations among which it stayed. We should not let the contemptible attempt to compare Jewish national feeling to the well-known racist theories upset us. National feeling is a deep and noble thing. And Paul Gross in the Jerusalem Post to anchor in Israel's de facto constitution a definition of the Jewish state, which implies a clear emphasis on Israel's Jewish status over and above its democratic character, plays into the hands of the most bigoted elements of the Israeli right. But Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is not alone in Parliament pursuing laws that will further increase the gaps between Israel's Jewish and non-Jewish citizens. Following the social justice movement of 2011, which arose primarily to protest the high cost of living, the government announced this week that a new subsidy will be given to young couples buying their first apartment but conditioned that subsidy on the buyer's army service, effectively excluding the Palestinian citizens of Israel who make up 20% of the population. Suhad Bishara is a Haifa-based lawyer and the director of the Lands Division in Adala, a legal center focused on the Arab minority in Israel. The VAT is 17%. You pay zero VAT if you served in the army and you want a fair to purchase as a family your first apartment from a contractor, up to 1,600,000 shekels. If you didn't serve in the army, you're entitled to the zero VAT if you purchase an apartment up to 600,000 shekels, which is something everyone is dreaming of, but it doesn't really exist. But the subsidy, which benefits Jewish citizens only as nearly no Palestinians serve in the Israeli army, is just a small part of the bigger picture. Access to real estate, and more importantly land, has been the biggest contention point and one of the central ways the state preserves its Jewish nature. In Israel, over 93% of the land is owned by the state and managed by the Israeli Land Development Authority a body created to steward the lands of the Palestinians who were expelled and fled when Israel was created. This mass nationalization of the country's most important resource is a central element in an ethnocracy, according to Professor Oren Iftakhel, who coined the term. Societies like uh, Malaysia or like Northern Ireland or like um, Cyprus before 1974 or like uh, the Baltic uh, states, Estonia and, and Latvia, many other countries around the world are ethnocracies and of course the lines are not sharply divided but you can explain a lot of what's happening there with the project of an ethnic takeover and still with the thin layers of democracy. The main characteristic is that the distribution of uh, resources and power is governed by ethnicity not by citizenship. Citizenship is um, an envelope which is quite often hollow. In practice we don't see any balance between the Jewish and democratic uh, values that the state is advocating uh, for in practice. What we see only a Jewish state in practice in the land regime, the state of Israel under the name of uh, a Jewish state is holding a system of segregation. Under the name of the Jewish state, they are denying internally displaced people from going back to their properties, home and villages. Uh, under the name of uh, the Jewish state, basically uh, the state of Israel is trying to evict and uproot 90,000 Bedouin Arabs in the Naqab. So we don't see any balance here at all. The law also stirred debate among Israeli politicians. The head of the opposition, Yitzhak Bougie Herzog, underlined his party's loyalty to the Jewishness of Israel, but said that labor founded the state and its leaders wrote the Declaration of Independence 
a document that protects Israel as a Jewish state. Unfortunately, having led to the collapse of the negotiations, Netanyahu is leading us to the loss of a Jewish majority, which will lead to Israel becoming a binational state. Even this law can't hide the saddening fact. Speaking in support of the law, Minister of Home Front Defense and Communications Gilad Erdan appeared on Channel 2. היום יותר מתמיד אולי כשהמסע ומתן קרס אנחנו מבינים, אני מצפה שיבינו כולם אפילו מקיר לקיר במפה הפוליטית שיש צורך לפני שאנחנו דורשים מאחרים להכיר בנו כמדינה יהודית שאנחנו נבסס את זה בחוקי היסוד אני... של מדינת ישראל יש, יש ספק למישהו שאנחנו מדינת העם היהודי, אני אגיד לך, אם זה ברמת ההצהרה, יש את מגילת העצמאות, ואם זה ברמת המעשה, יש את חוק השבות. בית המשפט העליון, כשיש הרבה פעמים עתירות או התנגשויות על נושאים שהם משליכים כן על חיי היומיום שלנו, הקצאת קרקעות, הקמת יישובים יהודיים, המעמד של השפה העברית, מפרש היום את ה... חוקים או את החוק הקיים במדינת ישראל לאור חוקי היסוד הללו שהתמקדו בזכויות הפרט כשמנגד אין לנו שום חוק יסוד שמדבר על הזכות הלאומית שישראל היא הבית הלאומי של העם היהודי. So a very typical idea of ethnocracy is that the state belongs to one group and this is of course the bone of contention and the beef of the minorities that can never feel incorporated and therefore the loyalty is always questioned because how can they be loyal to a state that actually always impinges on their rights and on their resources. Do you think that this is going to hurt the Israelis? In the time when they are attacked by the Jews, 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 by the Jews. Part of ethnocratic regime uh, theory is that ethnocracies are inherently unstable because of this contradiction. They cannot actually receive legitimacy sufficient legitimacy from the, from the minorities because the state is about taking over from the minorities, from the indigenous minorities usually. So there is an overlap with colonialism, but it's usually the stage after. Now in Israel-Palestine, at least in the West Bank and previously in Gaza, it was blatant colonialism. It wasn't even post. But inside Israel, it's like a post-colonial dynamic of the Jewish group taking over the space on and on. It's continuing until now. For the real news, I'm Leah Terachansky in Tel Aviv.